brought me to some scriptures that I've written some time back, all right, concerning the power of confession. Amen. The power of confession. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of confession. Very important that you know how to confess because these things are invited by words. Words spoken by either yourself or somebody else. Let's go to the word of God in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. And uh, together we'll read a few verses there. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and uh, verse number 14 to 16. We'll take three wonderful verses from there. Hallelujah. By the word, sorry, but the word, but the word, but the word is very near unto thee. That's what the Bible says. In your mouth and in your heart that you mayest do it. See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil. Verse 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you mayest live and multiply. Say, I multiply. I multiply. Say, I shall live and multiply. My finances will multiply. My breakthrough will multiply. Everything about me will multiply. How come? Bible says, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land wherever you go to possess it. May the Lord bless the grace upon his word. Hallelujah. The power of confession. So the Bible says the word is near. It's not far, it's near. There is a word that is close to each one of us. If you sit yourself down and think through, you discover there's a lot of thoughts that come in your mind every now and then. Sometimes you remember uh, a school friend. Sometimes you remember something that happened when you went somewhere. Sometimes you remember what you want to do. Sometimes you remember your dream. Sometimes you remember uh, your mother. There are so many thoughts that come in our mind. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord has been gracious to us because he says the word is dear, it is in your mouth. So it's not about the thoughts in your spirit, in your mind, it's about the word that is on your mouth. The word that comes out of your mouth is the most important one because it changes the direction of your destiny. It changes that which you can have in life. It changes every commandment of the angel in their responsibility to either help you or be frozen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So a child of God has got a choice to speak the word. Right? We have a choice. It's not what goes down in our mind, it's what goes down out of our mouth. That is what the challenge is. So we, as children of God, need to know what to say with our mouth. Hallelujah. We need to know what to say. It doesn't matter what has been said about you, it is what is said about you that you say yourself. So people may say different things, it doesn't matter. So life and death, according to this word, is articulated, it's manufactured, it's designed through what we say. Hallelujah. It is made. So when you say certain things that are not according to the word of God, in the kingdom of Satan, there's a department called death. Department of death. So in that department, the devil, who is supposed to be using witchcraft, 
to kill you. He comes with witchcraft. If witchcraft fails, he goes back to the department and collaborates with other demons. So the demons that are supposed to kill you by a knife, they come. If they fail to kill you by knife, they go back to the department and try to get another form of demon through car accident. If that fails, they keep going back. Why? Because of the language that was released. Are you here? Are you here? So he says to us that the word is near. It is in our mouth and in our hearts. One of the things I found is, and I want you to move away from this, I found that you can be in the presence of God. You can be in the house of God, hear the word correctly. But somehow the moment you leave, the enemy takes over and you forget what you know. It's easier to confess correctly here. But when you are out there, the enemy can manipulate you. You agree with other people what they say. You agree with them. And you know later on that, no, that, that was not right. But you are trying to be nice to them. You are trying to align yourself to what they are saying so that you may fit in what they are saying. And by doing that, you have released the wrong words out of your mouth. Amen. It's not supposed to be so. Oh, yeah. I was in a meeting. Some senior people in the ministry were sitting down there. And a senior man of God said something about the fire. You know, the Bible in James chapter 5 speaks about the fire being a tongue. Uh, I mean, a tongue being a fire. Hallelujah. How it can spread and destroy. We had just finished the meeting. And then somebody rose up and said, I just want us to, uh, to pray about this situation. Uh, because if we don't pray about it, I tell you, we are finished. In my heart, I said, not me. I can never be finished. But you see, I've noticed it's a tenderness. It's a tenderness, and that tenderness must disappear. Amen. Where when you are with people in the wrong atmosphere, maybe even Christians, you agree with what they are saying, even if it is wrong. It's not our portion. Hallelujah. So he says in verse 15, I have said before you this day, life. And good, say good. good. You see, he said it is not just good to have life and not have the good of the life. Life must be good. Yeah. God wants you to enjoy a good life. Yeah. Then he says death and evil. Say that is not my portion. Not my portion. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus so life and death are right in front of our mouths, right in front of our eyes, right in front of our doorsteps. You can walk out of this auditorium and you're just crossing the road, some drunk guy will bump into you, if you confess it. If you confess it, glory be to God. If you don't confess it, you see that drunk person will never ramp into my car, ramp into my house, ramp into my life. Never. And it will never happen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Say life, life is my portion. Is my portion. And good life, good life is my portion. Is my portion. So what God is saying, He is saying, see life and choose it. See good and choose it. See success and choose it. See a future and declare I will be in the future. Hallelujah. When you see poverty, say I didn't see it. 
When you hear problems, you say, my ears, they didn't allow it to penetrate. When you hear disaster, you say, not me, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God has said what comes out of your mouth. If you agree with other people, where two or three agree, in the word of God, it shall come to pass. In the demonic world as well, the devil has put pressure that it has happened. It shall not happen to us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is God saying? Number one, remember the way is near. It's near. It's very close. That way that brings release. That way that brings healing. That way that brings breakthrough is very near. The Bible says it is in your mouth. Hallelujah. It is very near. It's not far. Now if the word is the word of God, it's not miles away. It is right around you and me. That means the presence of God's word where God himself is present is around you. It's around you. It's not just the word. The word is your life and the spirit. And because of that, it is near. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, to not use the correct word is an error. It's an error. To not speak the word, to say, uh, me, I, I don't like to talk too much. I, I, I don't want people, I'm just a demon. I don't want people to think uh, uh, maybe I'm a pastor now, you know. Uh, I don't want people to think, uh, you know, in, I talk too much in the, in the, in the prayer meeting, in the home It is wrong. Concerning your destiny, you should talk too much. You should be saying, I know who I am. I am a child of the living God. I am going far. I am going to make it. It is never too late. God is on my side. Concerning, I'm on Facebook, I'm name on Facebook. Sometimes I look at stuff people post. And I say, Lord, why don't they post something godly about themselves? I see uh, so and so has updated his something like that, updated his image or something like that. So a new photo is on the Facebook, nothing said. And the Bible says the word is near you, in your mouth. Not your picture. Your picture can be seen all over the world, witches who see it. And they will not be afraid. But the words that you speak, that is the one that they are afraid of. Are you understanding the word? The word is near. Not your image. Not your photo. The Bible never said uh, your Moses was the one who had graced with a face that was radiating with an anointing. I know you carry me the fire of God. Hallelujah. By the presence of the Holy Spirit upon you. I have read it in deliverance sometimes. And I pray for somebody. The demon says, uh, please stay away from us. Your fire is too much. The fire in this church is too much. But the word. You see, demons confess that Jesus is Lord. They have to use their mouth and declare Jesus is Lord. So because of that, you have to be a speaking individual. You have to be a speaking individual concerning your life and your journey and your business and your children and everything pertaining to you. Are you hearing me? You have a child who looks hopeless. I'm not sure how this child will make it. Begin to speak into that child. Begin to declare, boy, you are going to make it. You are going to pass and do well. You are going to be very successful. Speaking the word. You see, you, you can't win elections without 
not speaking. <laughs> Have you seen anyone winning a machine without speaking? So if politicians can win elections by their deceit, by their lies, we are going to make sure we put a road here and the road doesn't come. But they won. What about you who knows the power of the word of God? You've got to open your mouth and speak the word. Psalms 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth, Psalms 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto your sight, O Jehovah, my rock and my redeemer. The psalmist says, I'm standing on your word. Let the word which comes out of my mouth and the thoughts that have brought this word to come out of my mouth be pleasing to you, O God. Hallelujah. Amen. I guarantee you cannot fail. Amen. You may not know how to pray, but you must not know how to talk. Amen. You must know how to talk. Amen. You may not know how to sing, but you must know how to talk. Amen. You may not know how to understand the precepts of the word, but whatever verse you know, use that verse and speak. So from today you see the word is in my mouth. It's near. The whole week the word is in my mouth. It is here. I am a child of God. I cannot struggle. Struggle is not my portion. I can never fail. Nobody can count me as a failure. I am complete in his image. I walk in grace. I was anointed in January. It is my season for divine progress. That's it. Speak it. Speak it. By those words, God will release your angels quicker than you think. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, the words that come out of my mouth, and what is in my mind must have a true connection. Mm -hmm. They must be married together. Yes. I can't think evil and speak good. I must think correctly and speak correctly. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation, the words that are in my mind that have not yet come out of my mouth, be aligned yes. to you, O oh God. That's what he's saying. This is what is called renewing your mind. Renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody sends you something on Facebook or whatever. You read it, you start panicking. Ah, ah. Because if you do allow that to sit in your mind, mm -hmm. and then your confession will be very weak. The psalmist said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, yes, my mind, yes, be pleasing. Yes. So there is a time a child of God can say yes. I remember, I used to think like this, but when I confessed it, I couldn't receive it because my mind was saturated with negative words and even when I spoke it, I didn't have faith. There is that stage in life where you need to go past. Hallelujah. Amen. The landlord comes and he's shouting at you, what will happen? You have so many thoughts coming, so many thoughts, so many thoughts coming. When the landlord has gone, it takes so many uh, uh, minutes or so to say, uh, before you can say, oh, Lord, you are my helper. Even your Lord is my helper, he's weak. Why? Because you need the meditation yeah. of his word in you yeah. in order to be confident with what you are saying. Yeah. When land of course, you are now in that spirit and grace to say, that man is a liar. Yeah. 
in the name of Jesus. You bring it out with confidence when you have the meditation of the word of God. That's why I say the unwillingness to speak will not win your election. Being a quiet individual is in the other areas. Not when it comes to your destiny. Amen. You can be quiet about who is going to be president, but don't be quiet about who you are going to be. Amen. What you're going to be like. Amen. You can be quiet about the government, but you can be quiet about your destiny. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, number two, it is a risk to remain silent. It is a risk to remain silent. You are risking your destiny. You are risking your life. You are risking your future. You are risking all the good things that you should be having. People who say, I don't like to talk too much, they are risking something in life. <coughs> People who say, oh, you know me, I'm okay the way I am, we're broke like this. You are risking something. You're being passive. Glory be to God. When you remain silent, you prefer to be silent. Something quiet. Something very quiet will quietly creep into your life. And when it arrives, it will be the one you don't want. Because you were quiet. You know, there are quiet things that you creep in. One day I was sleeping, and uh, I thought there was a bag on the bed. So I switched on the light and uh, did this to the blankets. I couldn't see it. I tried to sleep. Again, I felt there was something moving. This thing was quietly going in. When I switch on the light, it quietly goes out. When I switch on the light, quietly it comes back. So I realized that silence can bring you some quiet things which you don't like. Glory be to God. It is a risk to be silent. It is a risk to be quiet. It is a risk to not argue for what you deserve for. Hallelujah. It is a risk to not argue. I think it's, it's Solomon or David who said, I will argue my case with God. Job. Job. I will argue my case with God. So it is a risk to be on this planet Earth and keep quiet. My mother raised us like this. You see, when I'm with other people, I have to respect them. So I allow them to talk and just keep quiet. It is a risk. Be a talker. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Start talking. Start talking. Start talking. This is June. You have been silent from January to May. Five months. You have to start talking now. Lord, this is my season of divine progress. I have heard testimony in the house. Mine must come to pass. Start talking. It will come to pass. Glory be to God. Last year, number three. Life is good. Life is good. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. See, I have said before you this day, Life and good. Life and good. You see, life is married to good. Good.
wound is also married to life. You can't separate them. They say I've given, you could have said I've given you life, but in that life is no good, it's all evil. He says, I have given you life and good. Can you eat back on its own? No. You can't. You need something to eat back with, man. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Can you make tea just with water? No. You need another ingredient. Glory be to God. So he says, I've given you life and good. Life and good are a blessing from God. Let me tell you the honest truth. God is life and God is good. There's no evil in God. There's no bad thing in God. Everything about God Almighty is about life. It's about goodness. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I want you to know that he didn't bring you this far to disappoint you. He didn't bring you this far to abandon you. He didn't bring you from your village to this place that you may end with a bad story. He didn't bring you this far to forsake you. He didn't bring you this far to frustrate you. To make you feel, I wish I had never come this far. I should have stayed and suffered in the village. He didn't bring you this far for that purpose. Because he has given you life and good. Your story is not about to end today. You're just starting life. Amen. You're starting good things. Amen. And good things will come in abundance to the glory of Jehovah. Amen. If somebody can be called by the landlord and say, what can you pay? Even you, that is your portion. Amen. If somebody can be promoted and uh, given grace for promotion, that is your story. Amen. If somebody can travel overseas, even you, you will travel. Amen. You may not know how, but you will travel Amen. in the name of Jesus. If somebody can testify of the goodness of the Lord, I want you to know that the word of God will grow in your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Let's go to the last verse, Isaiah 51. So he also said to Isaiah, verse 16. Isaiah 51, verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth. Ah! So he has actually put his words in our mouths. In our mouths. The problem is we are not speaking. Again, we can see. He has put the words already in our mouths. In Deuteronomy, he said, the word is near you. It's in your mouth. But now he's confirming to Isaiah, he says, I put my words in your mouth. I have covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth and say to Zion, you are my people. Today, wherever I go, I have favor. Look at how handsome I am. You make me in your image and likeness. There's no one like me. This year I was hoping this morning, you know how many of them they are. The word is in your mouth. In your mouth. Speak it. Declare it. It will produce results. 
He says, if you do that, look at what he told Isaiah. Isaiah is one man. He says, I put my ways in your mouth. I have covered you in the shadow of my hand. I have planted the heavens. I have planted heavens. <laughs> I have planted heavens. I put the skies by the word. I put the clouds by the word. You can also put the heavens to order. You can say, heaven, tomorrow, don't forget, I'm on flight number uh, Emirates, whatever. I'll fly from here to Dubai. I'll come back. The heavens will be here. Amen. I say there is a man on this flight, don't tamper with him. They will be here. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. You can't fail. You are a product of success. Amen. You are a product of breakthrough. Amen. That's what God has created for you. Just know who you are. And don't be afraid, you see, sometimes when I say it, I'm not sure. Uh -uh. He says, my hand has covered you. That's what he said. I've covered you. Hallelujah. Stand up. We bless his name. Poverty and sickness is not in our line of life. Not in our line. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, the Bible advertises for me. It says, goodness and mercy must follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus, I receive goodness and mercy all the days of my life. I will be seen long man. I shall live long. I shall live long. I will continue to live on this planet earth that my father created. My father in heaven created me. For me in the name of Jesus without poverty, without sickness, without disease, without frustration, Certain you are a liar in the name of Jesus. The word of God is in my mouth. I speak the fire of the Holy Spirit through the word in my life. This is my season for divine progress. I shall progress. I shall reproduce. I shall become bigger and bigger, greater and greater. Goodness and life is around me, is upon me, in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, perfect this word in my spirit. Perfect this word in my life, in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 May you reproduce the winner in you. May you reproduce the champion in you. May you reproduce that powerful individual in you. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Father, I pray for grace. I pray for grace. I pray for grace. Devils know this church. They know who we are. They know the power of the word and the power in the name of Jesus. So today, Father, I thank you that the word is in our mouth. By the authority, in the name of Jesus, those who are watching and those of God who are here today, our time of God has arrived for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Our confession shall bring great results by the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to unction your word in our mouth. I ask you, Jehovah, to erase every bad thought, every mind blankness be removed in the name of Jesus. Every confusion in the mind disappear. Every tongue tightness where a wrong word comes 
powers we come against the spirits in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak that to God, our mouths will be sanctified Amen. by your word, by your spirit, Amen. to put the devil in total shame Amen. and humiliation. 